It's easy to think that we can solve our problems by waving a magic wand, taxing people who have a lot, taking their income, and redistributing it to people who don't have a lot. But we know, because we've been doing this for many, many years, that it doesn't have long-term solutions for poverty alleviation. And so, again, as Christians, we don't have the luxury of sitting by and letting it continue to happen. We have to figure out what's going to work and then do that. So the best, most productive, and well-tested way of helping the poor is through market trade. It's giving people, again, remember what I said when I characterized economic freedom, an opportunity society, a society where people can wake up and say, I'm going to open my own business, whatever it may be, and I'm largely unencumbered in doing so. I don't have to know somebody or pay somebody a bribe or get 25 licenses or pay a lot of registration fees. Those things make it hard, not for the rich, they make it exceptionally hard for the poor. So we don't want to set up hurdles for the poor that make it difficult for them to get up and do what we're doing. We don't want it to be overwhelmingly difficult to be a CPA or be a software engineer or work at Starbucks or be a cashier or anything in between. All of these things are valued by God. If God's called you to be a janitor, you should do it with excellence and integrity every day because the world needs janitors. We put a lot of glory around being you know, a neurosurgeon and it's a valuable skill. But do you realize or have you ever thought about the fact that the, jan the neurosurgeon needs the janitor? He couldn't do his job without that skill or function. He couldn't accomplish his mission if he didn't have people who he doesn't even know creating new and more effective ways for him to perform surgery. There's a huge technology around this that he's not a part of. We're very interdependent people. And that's very liberating.